He's got a voice like solid gold and a twinkle in his eye. And keeping that eye firmly placed on our parliamentarian buddies is Tony Amos. We welcome Tony and the weekly political roundup. Tony Amos. Jared Smith, good to see you. Good to see you. And have you had a lovely Queen's birthday weekend, Tony? It wasn't bad, was it, eh? Mm. A long Queen's birthday weekend. Not a long Queen, a long weekend. <laughs> it's good, though. We like our long weekends, yeah. don't we? They're good, good for the heart, good for the soul, good for families, good for people. Just good to have. Very... Somebody has to work, sadly, over long weekends, but most of us, if we're lucky, get a break. What about the buzz, Tony? There's always a buzz. There is a buzz. And the buzz this week, Jared. it's been established that Parliament is living proof that big class sizes just don't work. <laughs> That's the buzz. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads us on to politics. Yes, Jared. our weekly look at the global gutter of life. Our look at the sooks and the crooks, the oddballs and misfits, the freaks and the geeks, the rooters and looters of public office we proudly call our politicians. Well, what's happening then, Tone? Well, Jared, the search party's out again. Is it? The search is on. They're, they are hunting for the opposition. <laughs> Every government needs an opposition. No matter what country you're in, if it's a democracy, it needs an opposition. And the opposition need to be mongrel-like in their attack. They need to be attack dogs. They need to go for the throat of the government. Because that way the government is challenged and checked on the way through. And right now in this country, our opposition is not working as strongly as it could be. I mean, who are the opposition? Well, right now it's best represented by Winston Peters and Hone Harawira. And they've both stepped up to the plate as such. They both accepted the challenge, doing a pretty good job, but they, they don't have the numbers. Labor has the numbers. Labor need to get in there and be an aggressive opposition. And you mentioned class sizes, Tony. Class sizes, another major muck-up from this current government. I mean, it's outrageous, isn't it? Eh? Yes, yes, Heke Aparata, the government minister, the education minister, been thrown at the deep end, of course. She went in there with this plan to, to increase class sizes, reduce the number of teachers in schools. And, you know, some schools were going to lose up to seven teachers out of a school. Wow. They've changed. They've backed down already. They've said, oh, no, we're going to cap it at two teachers, two teachers per school. Well, that's too, too many. We should be increasing teacher numbers. Very important to be, to be moving forward, not to be moving backwards in this closing down sale and dumbing down this government seems intent on inflicting on the country. The parents, the teachers have stood up and said, no, the government has already backed down and they will back down further because Shonky Jonky likes to be the populist Prime Minister, and right now he's copping it because the whole country knows what a stupid idea this dumbing down of classrooms really is, you know. And clearly for Shonky Jonky and his government, the honeymoon is over, which may be why they're focusing on gay marriage. <laughs> <laughs> And I hear there's a little bit of a hangover from the World Cup, Tony. I think there were several hangovers after the after the Rugby World Far Cup, Jared. Big event last year, wasn't it? Eh? A grand event, and of course, the All Blacks won. And that was the most important and the only result that we could live with anyway. And we got there. As a nation, we rejoiced. But something that's just come out in the last few days was that Murray McCulley, and I'm not picking on McCulley, but Murray McCulley was the sports minister and the Rugby World Cup minister, as well as the MFAT minister. Now, after the first night's tournament in Auckland, you may recall the fan zone on Auckland's waterfront was a bit jammed, and they needed to expand it, needed funding. So McCulley, as sports minister, put on both hats. He put on his MFAT hat and his sports minister hat, took $6 million out of the MFAT funding and gave it to the fan zone for Party Central so that more people could get on the turps and get drunk and get that hangover in downtown Auckland. But that's plundering, isn't it, eh? I mean, it's not really appropriate to plunder MFAT funds to help prop up a drinking venue. Some would say he has his priorities right. Some would say he has his priorities right and some would also <laughs> say, but who's been lobbing him? Highly likely, <laughs> highly likely the alcohol industry. Now, Tony, you can't go. You cannot go without a little reference to our wonderful friends in Wellington, the List MP. Oh, yes. Life's little tragedies. <laughs> the List MPs. Nobody voted for them, but they're good to have there for one reason. They always come up with a good story for us. And this particular story is about a List MP who is having some matrimonial issues at home. Not unusual for MPs, of course, because they do lead a difficult life. You know, just, just for, they do. I mean, they're travelling away from home. They're working away from home. So it, it's, it's likely these things happen. Anyway, they're having some, some minor matrimonial issues. So they went off to, for some counselling. And it was one of those group 
counseling sessions they went to. It wasn't too serious, but it was a, a good thing to go and do. And they all sat down. It was about a, a dozen people, about half a dozen couples, and they sat down. And, and the person who was the facilitator of the therapy group said, right, now, it's very important that every couple, each member of each couple, understands the likes, the dislikes, the things that matter to the other person in the relationship, yeah, which right makes sense, so. doesn't it? It does. So the therapist said, right, we'll start with the men. Now, now guys, he said, I want you to identify something special that your wife has a good, strong association with. For example, I need you to tell me now what your wife's favourite flower is. And of course, the flower is something of beauty. It was a, was a good thing. And the less MP sat there puzzled for a moment, and then this, this, this awakening came to his face and he put his hand on his wife's hand, he looked her in the eye and he said, sweetheart, it's Edmund self-raising, isn't it? <laughs> That's politics, see you next week.